Hey guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and today we are going to be building a beast of a computer. Now, big thanks to B&H for donating all of this gear. I reached out to them and asked if they would like to sponsor this video and donate all of the gear to build the most powerful computer and the most expensive computer that I've ever owned. If you're like us and you're going to be working in Adobe Premiere a lot of the time, spending money on an upgraded processor with extra cores and a more powerful graphics card might be a good idea for you. But if you're a photographer and you're spending most of your time in Photoshop and Lightroom, you can actually save a ton of money. Most of these components will not help you at all when it comes to that software specifically. So if you'd like to learn more about why I chose each of these components and the cheaper options if you're using different types of software, check out the link in the description. You can head over to F-Stoppers. I've written a very detailed post about everything, but let's get into this build. Let me quickly tell you what I have here on the table. We have dual 4K Dell monitors. These are 27 inch. I only have one on the table just because we didn't have room. I'm very excited for these. Right here on the front, we have RAM. We have the motherboard. Here we have the CPU cooler. Up in front here, we have the i9 processor, two M.2 solid state drives. We have a GeForce RTX 2080 graphics card, power supply over here. Over here, we have a 10 gigabit network card that's going to give us 10 gigabit speed in the network that we built in this house. And then we have a keyboard and mouse, and of course, a case to hold all of these components. Let's clear off this table, get the motherboard down here, and let's install the CPU. All right, so the first step is we need to mount this processor to the motherboard. Let's go ahead and open up the motherboard here. So the first thing that we need to do is grab these two metal arms and we are going to lift. And that is going to reveal all of these pins below. You have to be very careful here. You don't want to push down any of these pins. You could bend them and ruin the entire motherboard. I'm then going to open up this processor and you'll notice on the processor there's a very small arrow in one of the corners. There's also a small cutout on the motherboard itself. You wanna match those two up, and this is going to fit straight down on the motherboard. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lower this on top. It's going to make a scary crunch sound, but that's normal. And then when we push both levers down, this plastic piece pops right off. Now let's install our two solid state drives. A few years ago, every computer had a spinning hard drive. Those were standard hard drives. Then they moved on to solid state drives where nothing was moving, but they still plugged in with a SATA cable. This is the newest technology. This actually snaps right onto the motherboard. This motherboard in particular has this little shroud right here and it says M.2. I'm going to unscrew this and we will install these chips right below the shroud. So we have two of these M.2 chips and there are two ports on this motherboard. I've actually never seen a vertical mount here. I may add that in a little bit later because it's going to be a little bit cumbersome standing up like that. But the normal M.2 slots that I'm used to slide in just like this and underneath it, you'll see a small little piece of foam that holds it securely in place. All right, so like I said, there's one more vertical M.2 slot here. I'm not gonna worry about that at the moment. Let's go ahead and open up this RAM and install that. So RAM is one of the easiest things that you can install or upgrade. We have four sticks of RAM, but we have eight slots here. It's very important that you install these correctly with your motherboard. If you look on this motherboard in particular, you'll notice A1, A2, B1, B2, C1 and 2, and D1 and 2. What we wanna do is put this in A, B, C, and D1. So it's going to stagger every other slot. And on every stick of RAM, you'll notice that there is a single notch here. That's going to help you line it up and make sure you don't put it in backwards. So you're going to simply line this up in the slot and you wanna go straight down with the chip.
All right, so I've gotten the case unboxed and I've taken both sides off of the case. It's now time to install the motherboard in this case. Now there are different shapes and sizes of motherboards and cases. This happens to be an ATX size motherboard and this is a mid-size tower. Now if you look inside of this case, you'll see this little key down here and it says an ATX size case is the letter A. And then by all of these screw holes, you'll notice these little standoffs. It's these little uh, threaded cylinders that hold the motherboard off of the case. Luckily for us, all of these standoffs have been installed in the A slot, which is exactly what we need. So that's one step that we do not have to do. All right, the first thing that we need to do is install the IO plate. This is where all of the ports are going to show up on the back of the machine. I'm going to open this up and we're going to just slide it right in to the rear panel of this case. Now I'm going to lower the motherboard down into place and what I'm going to try to do is kind of scoop it in so that each of these jacks will fit right into the I.O. plate. And then I'm going to be mindful of all of the standoffs and screw holes and I'm going to try to get everything lined up. So this little hole right here has a special standoff. It's actually not a standoff, it's a little pin that we wanna make sure slides right into that hole. And that's going to guarantee that the motherboard is in exactly the right spot. So everything's lined up at this point. It's now time to screw this motherboard down. Inside of all cases, you will find a small box just like this. This has all of the screws and tie downs that we need to finish this build. All right, everything is securely in place. Let's grab the power supply. At this point, we should probably stand this entire computer up on its side. That way we can reach in, grab everything for the power on this side. And then of course, on this side, we can reach the motherboard. Okay, for this build, I have a 750 watt power supply. When I install this, I wanna make sure that the fan is facing down and that the AC jack is facing out. You would slide this right in and then press it up against the back of the case and screw it in. I'm going to do that in a second because right now I wanna be able to get to all of these jacks and run all of the lines. It makes it a little bit easier if you can do that outside of the case. First cable we want is the motherboard cable. Everything is labeled here. This says MB on it. And then on the back of the power supply, it also says MB. Next up, we'll plug in the CPU. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going into the power supply through the back of the case. Now the CPU jack on this motherboard is in the upper left-hand corner, so I'm actually gonna run these cables right up to that area. Again, just to keep it a little bit cleaner. All right, next up, I'm going to grab the VGA cable. This is going to be for the graphics card that we're going to install in just a second. I'm gonna plug this into VGA one, and again, run through the back. All right, next up, I'm going to run the SATA power cable here. We're not gonna be plugging in any hard drives or SSD drives using this, but I do know that the liquid cooler that we're going to install in just one second is going to need this. So once again, I'm just going to plug it in the back where it says SATA one, and then I am going to run it through the back of the case and just have it available. So at this point, we have installed everything that we're going to need for this power supply, so I can go ahead and put it in place. What I'm going to do is just drop it down here. Remember that we want the fan to be facing down, and then of course the AC jack facing out. And then there are four simple screws that go around the outside. There are three cables that are going to be attached to the case. In this situation, we have USB 3.0, and that is this blue cable here. Next up, we have a cable that says HD audio on it. That is going to be for the headphone and mic jack that's on the front of the computer. And then there is one final cable that says F panel or front panel. That's going to be for the hard drive light and the on and off button. Let me show you where these go. So the USB 3.0 cable is going to plug in right here in the middle of the motherboard. HD audio is down here on the very bottom left of the motherboard. All right, the front panel cable is right here on the bottom right. Now keep in mind that with this particular motherboard in this case, you're going to leave five pins on the right side completely open. 
All right, so now let's talk about this water cooler. I've been working on this for a little while, and even though both the case and the water cooler are made by NZXT, I've gone online and I found some other people complaining about this exact same thing, that there's this small lip that makes this not fit exactly right. So if you're trying to replicate this build, I'm going to recommend that you use a simple air cooler. There's so much easier to deal with, and I will put a link to a recommended air cooler. However, we've gotten it to work kind of, and basically the premise here is that we're going to attach these fans to this metal mounting piece that was right inside the case. We removed it. We want the air to suck in from underneath the case and from the back side. It's going to pull air through the radiator, which is going to cool off the water and then cool off our CPU. And then the air will be blown out from the fan in the back and from the fan on the top, which has already been installed in this case. So I've got a couple of screws left to screw in. So unless I'm doing something wrong and everyone else complaining on the internet is also doing something wrong, I'm going to have to leave the screws out of the top of this top fan here. I can't get it to line up with the radiator, but there's barely any gap here, so I don't think it's going to have a problem. It's very important that you keep in mind which direction these fans are either blowing or sucking. And if you have the nice logo on the front, that means the air is being sucked through this direction and blown out the back. So let me go ahead and run these wires through the back of the case. So on this side, I'm just noticing these little tabs and I wanna make sure that they are right in here so that everything's flush. And then on this side, I can just screw in this panel and the cooler all at once to the case. All right, so at this point we have four fans in this case and each fan needs to be plugged into the motherboard. If you check out the motherboard manual, you'll notice that there are a ton of different places that you can plug these fans into. Each one has a different title on it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in each one of these cables into a different slot on the motherboard. So in the box of this cooler, there are a bunch of different mounts that you could mount to the back of the motherboard. This motherboard in particular doesn't require that. It actually already has these places that we can screw this cooler directly onto it. The first thing that we're going to need to do is install these little standoffs. And you can see that one side is uh, narrow and one side is a little bit shorter and fatter. And we're gonna screw these in on the four corners around the motherboard. Okay, now it's time to install the cooler. And you'll notice that when you take off this plastic piece, thermal paste has already been installed. Make sure that when you set this down, you don't lift it back up again. This is kind of a, a one chance type thing. If you mess it up, you need to clear it off, buy some more thermal paste and restart. Take note of the logo on the top of this cooler. We want it to be facing down so that it's legible. I'm just going to set this right on these standoffs, go straight down with it. And then I'm going to grab these thumb screws and screw this down. So we have one final cable that we need to install onto this water pump. And this end is actually going to install on the water pump itself. This little jack here is the exact same thing we've plugged in four times on the motherboard. This is for the fan. If you want to plug in four additional fans, think of this as an extension cable. So you can do that here if the motherboard doesn't have enough jacks. And then down on this end, this end of the cable is a SATA connection. This is what we're going to plug in to the cable that came out of the power supply that said SATA on it. Normally you would use this connection to plug in a hard drive or an SSD drive, but in this case, we're gonna use the power from that cable to power this water pump. All right, now it's time to install the graphics card. The first thing that we need to do is take out these plates on the back. There's simple screws here. And this graphics card is gonna require two slots. So we're gonna take out two of these. Now there's one other plate that we need to remove. Okay, so we're gonna install this very similarly to the way that we installed the RAM. We wanna make sure that the plastic tab is moved out of the way. We're going to place this straight down, making sure not to bend any of the tabs. And we wanna make sure also that all the cables are out of our way here. That's great, and then to hold it securely in place, we can add these screws back in.
Okay, we need to power this GPU now, and we have cables that say VGA G3 on them. The first one that I'm going to install on the right here has two cables. One has six ports and the other has two. We're just gonna put them side by side and install them together. And then right next to that, it's the exact same cable. It has another port with six, and we're going to install that right next to it. Now it's time to install the 10 gigabit ethernet card. This fits in the smaller PCI slot here. This is officially the easiest part of the entire build. It literally just slides right down inside. No cables, nothing else you have to do. And we're just gonna add the screw back in to hold it in place. So for the final piece of this build, we need to install the standing M.2 drive. And if you look in the box with this motherboard, you can see this little metal piece and you can actually put the M.2 drive standing up in this. This is gonna keep it somewhat rigid. It still seems a little bit fragile to me for reasons like that. I'm going to install these incredibly tiny screws in this. And then I'm going to lower it down into place. Now I'm going to take the M.2 drive and just slide it right into place, push it down, and then with this little piece of rubber, you stick it here to hold it in place. That seems like a insanely over-engineered piece, but it is holding it in place. I think we're actually done with this build. Let me clear off this table. Let's plug in a monitor and let's hope that it turns on. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, I finally got it working. I have a lot more work to do though. I still have to get windows on this thing. I need to open up the other monitor. I need to get the other mouse and keyboard that are actually supposed to be with this. So I have a little bit more to do, but once we're done, we can finally put this thing to work. Okay, we've got everything running, and I have to say, this computer is fantastic. First of all, these dual 4K 27-inch monitors by Dell, I absolutely love them. The color on them is incredible. The bezel is so thin, they're an absolute pleasure to use. I went ahead and installed Premiere on this thing. I've been editing all day. I've had no problems whatsoever, and I decided to do a speed test and compare it with some other computers that we have here in the office with us. What happened to testing the computer? I am testing the computer right now. Yeah. So I then decided to do a speed test comparing this machine with a couple other computers we have here in the office. I started out with a single 30 second clip in Premiere. I exported it out without any effects using only the processor and it was able to export in almost real time. So a 30 second clip took about 30 seconds to export. Now keep in mind, if you do not put effects on these clips, it's not going to use the GPU at all. So for the second test, I added a bunch of effects to this same 30 second clip. Once again, I exported with only the processor. I turned off the GPU and it took 12 minutes and 30 seconds to export the exact same 30 second clip. It took that much longer just because it had these color effects on it. I then exported the same file again, this time with the GPU enabled, and it was able to export it in 39 seconds. So you can see going from 12 minutes, 30 seconds to 39 seconds is insane. I then wanted to compare it to some other computers that we had. So the first thing that I tested was the Microsoft Surface Book. This thing has a dedicated graphics card of its own, but it took three minutes and 20 seconds with the graphics card enabled to export this 30 second clip. We also have an Alienware computer here with the GTX 1070. With that computer, it was able to export in one minute and 20 seconds. Now, all of this may sound like pretty small amounts of time to you, but keep in mind, this is just a 30 second clip. A lot of times we are exporting footage that is hours long. Today, we actually edited a critique the community that's right around one hour long. So you can imagine this will save us hours in the long run if we render off of this computer rather than one of the other ones that we already own. 
So at the end of the day, I could not be happier with this build. Once again, huge thanks to B&H for donating all of this equipment. Now, if you would like to follow along with this build, maybe replicate it yourself, or you'd like to learn more about every single component and why I chose it, and other suggestions if you're looking to save a little bit of money, or other suggestions if you're using other software other than Adobe Premiere, head over to the link in the description. I have written a massive post which explains everything in far more detail. For more content like this every single day, head over to fstoppers.com. And if you'd like to check out our full-length photography tutorials, head over to fstoppers.com slash stores.